Some of the footage in this video is from Internet Archives. The links will be found down below. Die Rise was the map to split the zombies community in more ways than one. But why? How can a map with so much character and innovation end up becoming one of the most hated among a lot of zombies fans? And how can a map that is so hated by zombies players be so beloved by others? And finally, how did an easter egg that followed the miserably simple transit easter egg become so room splitting itself? So welcome to zombies most room splitting map, the crumbling, vertically challenged Die Rise. <laughs> Launching in early 2013, Die Rise was received decently well among veterans, critics, and other Zombies fans. Looking back at the reviews from the Revolution DLC that brought Die Rise to our screens, we can see a lot of flowers to new and innovative challenges that it provided. To quote one reviewer, Die Rise is not for the noob player or casual zombie hunter. If you're interested in purchasing this DLC, understand that you'll need a team and you'll need to have a lot of patience to get used to the workings of these rooms and enemies that being said for those of us who have lost months of our lives to the intoxicating gameplay begging for a more intensive challenge this is it the rip roaring and rocking sentiment of die rise was that it was not new player friendly but it was the challenge veterans of zombies wanted, following the relatively simple options that Black Ops 2's launch offered. Said what they were able to do to make this map enjoyable and what I think will make people stick around and play it for a very long time is that, you know, if you guys haven't noticed, what they're doing is they're raising the bar, they're making the maps more difficult each time because they're trying to, you know, raise the skill level, get us better at the game, give us a challenge, you know, instead of just running circles all day. They're trying to make it more difficult and you know keep us around and just like try to make us better at the game die rise offered a vertical challenge unlike any other ever seen before in zombies players could no longer mindlessly battle the undead hordes as constant thought was required to stop perilous falls from hundreds of feet to instant death one wrong turn or miss jump could quickly bring instant conclusion to hours of progress areas such as the first jump to the mattresses down the slide by the ramen shop and down the elevator shaft were notorious for deaths and would make the player's hearts race every time they had to time their jump. Reviews from the time frequently mentioned the struggles new players would go through on Die Rise, but playing the map back then definitely made even vets struggle to make high rounds work, and the strategies of running zombie trains in open spaces and sticking all together in one corner weren't really possible, in the same way that we had seen on other Black Ops 2 maps like Town, bus depot, or farm, which offered larger spaces to run laps with zombies. One moment you were in the spawn, looking over at the beautifully chaotic view of a crumbling Shanghai China after the events of Black Ops 1 and the Moon Easter Egg. The next moment you were frantically navigating through claustrophobic rooms with a red screen, praying for the zombie's next swipe to miss. You would open the spawn door and be met with a wall a few feet after. Then, since the power switch isn't on yet, and it's across the map, you have yourself a whole journey to get there. Would you go down the escalator and take the risk of a small jump that landed a floor below at the cost that if you missed, you were fully dead until the next round if your team survived? If you did make it down, going further down meant a larger, riskier jump onto mattresses that if you missed, well, you weren't dead, but you were down. Even if you decided to exit down the smaller, safer jump and find your way to the mystery box side with a claustrophobic hallway past the ramen shop where zombies climb from the sides of the building smacking your legs, you had to pray that a slide down to the box didn't kill you. Collision damage in Black Ops 2 was brutal. <laughs> Big jumps, small jumps, slides shimmies they were all risky but didn't offer reward like the series had seen before like jug on the map moon for risking staying in spawn for the reward of jug on round one even if you made it all the way to the power switch the reward was more challenging as the areas of that building were full of tables and boxes and cages and really just blocked you from having any comfortable navigation on top of that the hardest thing about this map was the elevators imagine 
navigating this wipeout obstacle course of broken buildings, spending thousands of hard-earned zombie points on the door to get you here. You finally flick that power switch on, and you have to wait for perk machines to come down to you that were random on every single game. So if Jug was in one spot one game, it probably wouldn't be in the same spot next. On top of this, you had to take these elevators up and wait, and wait, and wait. All the while, zombies got the luxury of feasting on you in a Minecraft block-sized square. The kicker on all of this is that if you didn't get off the elevators in time... Ooh. Nowadays, we're used to seeing some pretty crazy zombie maps, but this was 2013. Die Rise's architecture introduced a new difficulty factor unlike any we had seen in zombies before, with players having to actively battle the map, alongside the zombies. Combine this with tight corridors, elevators for transport, randomly arranged perk machines, and confusing layout, and pretty quick, you can see why Die Rise caused so many problems for Zombies fans back in 2013. What would have helped here was a perk that negated fall damage completely, one that the mode became known for in all of Black Ops 1, and was missing from the first map of Black Ops 2. A perfect fit, and I'm happy to say that it was on this map. PhD Flopper. With a trip down to the plunging elevator of doom on the other side of spawn, this could be yours. Well, only if you plan on playing the soon-to-be-released Die Rise remaster, that is. Yeah, PhD Flopper was just straight-up teased in a hallway while you fell down the elevator shaft at spawn. In a sick, twisted game, Treyarch wanted to tease its player base, and they would do that for the next map in the game too, so don't worry, they'll be laughing at us again. Flopper would have taken all of the stress out of the jumps, and the map as a whole would have been a lot more new player and casual friendly. But the Treyarch of then didn't want to appeal to that audience. They wanted to test the player base to its extreme. The Treyarch trolling didn't stop there either. Die Rise offered an incredibly funky new wonder weapon in the Slickwifier that players were desperate to try. However, on a map that required precision of movement and accuracy when navigating the treacherous falls, the Wonder Weapon would only offer further difficulty, allowing players and zombies to slip and slide around the place, further endangering the possibility of deathly, game-ending falls. <laughs> Thankfully, there was a saving grace navigating building to building, and it was named Trample Steam. The brand new buildable to Die Rise made shortcuts exist, but only if the players found them. This was more like a nice sigh of relief than a cookie for exploring the new creation. For example, the most known trample steam spot was from where you built it to the top of the radio tower. The most risky spots were yet again from the spawn building to the power building. It was like Treyarch testing its veterans to look for places to use the trample steams and using the mattresses as clues. But it was also nice that Die Rise had an evolution of its part system in general. No longer was there a bunch of scattered ideas like in transit with different wacky doodads and thingamajig like machines, and traps, and jet guns, with parts from all over and only using specific tables. Instead, the parts for the trample steam were really close by, even if it meant a whole trip around the map for solo players to get back to the top floor again to grab the parts until the power was on. Over time, Frustration started to weigh, and you will find many videos and reviews of Die Rise that have a newer perspective, one that hates this map for the challenge reasons. There was no training, there were scary jumps, there was an over-reliance on the elevator system, then there was Black Ops 2 jank. Wait, I actually agree with this one, this game can be jank. The modern day take is that Die Rise is not good, but if you look at the intentions of the map at the time, and the player base that was playing the game back then, then you would see that it was innovative and completed the task it set out to complete. It's even often admired for its Easter egg since it was a return to larger scale quests. And for the rest of this video, I would like to talk about how its fantastic quest was solved by some of the biggest brains in the community at that time. Because just like the clues laid out with the mattresses for the trample steam, there were clues all around Die Rise from golden circles on elevators and symbols in rooms and little mahjong tiles, Treyarch was bringing back the Easter egg sauce too. So let's continue on from a room splitting map to a room splitting choice on the Easter egg quest with either Dr. Ludwig Maxis or Dr. Edward Richthofen's high maintenance Easter egg.
Just like that, the Easter egg began for those who dared to step in. This map navigated them to see that there was more to it than normal. The first step to this Easter egg was clued in pretty clearly to the players. You might have been new to Die Rise and noticed that a perk machine was tied to waiting on an elevator. So you waited, and then once you slurped that perk down, you rode the elevator up through the shaft, pause, up to another floor on the map. Treyarch knew the players would need to ride elevators up, so they put these golden symbols on four of them. If it wasn't clear before to the players, Treyarch also included radio comms from an old German man that kept cheering you on for standing on those symbols. Transit's easter egg beginnings were obscured behind miles of running through cornfields and thick fog, whereas Die Rise brought the start of the easter egg right to the forefront of the map. Die Rise wasn't shy with its easter egg, and just like the elevator shaft symbols being fairly obvious to spot, you would find clues all over the map to future steps. As we delve into the world's first teams discovering them, there will be clues that teams found out of order, clues from radios that didn't make sense to them, and you will see through their eyes a past back into 2013's landscape of zombies. Easter eggs were not the mass reported and cutscene dependent game over screen winning stories that we have today. In the eyes of Black Ops 2 players after transit, they were nothing more than an achievement and part two of this ongoing Victus storyline. This Easter egg would take three whole days to fully solve both sides, which is very intriguing given that these steps by today's standards aren't the most obscure. The very first easter egg quest step was dropped by a youtuber named Chaos, who said, But I'll zoom in on it. If you go look on your Xbox, you can see it really crystal clear. It is him, um, Treyarch, Black Ops 2 Zombies, paying homage to the, to the YouTube sensation that did Gangnam Style with over a billion views. Pretty cool. Thought it was a really cool easter egg. Wanted to share it with you guys. It's a panda. Man, 2013 YouTube. The very first real guide was uploaded by our friend from the Moon Easter Egg video, Nick That Gaming Show, not using leaked information to show us that the nav card table is much more user friendly this time, taking advantage of the space on the roof. And it's easy to see that Treyarch learned the lesson from transit. No longer are you running marathons to get even something as simple as the nav card. It's all on the roof outside of the card itself. And while we're in this room, we should discuss this silly perk and why it's living proof that not all innovation is good. Who's Who was a perk that if you died, you came back as a ghost that could revive yourself and bring you back with all of your stuff. Easy, right? Well, the thing is, you were a doppelganger, not a ghost. So the zombies could still get you. And instead of maybe having that pack-a-punch loadout, you had a starter pistol to make a run to your body to revive yourself. So, high rounds made this perk a risk to place in the loadout. Remember, zombies had a cap of four perks to run on each map. So, if you somehow found a way to evade the zombies, but didn't make it back to your body in time, you just were left with the starter pistol. Here's the biggest kicker. If the original player, as well as the clone, were down simultaneously, then their teammates would need to revive both in order to revive the down player. It was the embodiment of Treyarch trying to push challenge on Die Rise. A perk that let you earn a revive to restore your perks, but only if you could navigate the map with the bare essentials. But I believe this one was too niche to be cared about by many Zombies players, since waiting it out till next round was almost always more viable. And it's not like Who's Who let you revive yourself if you fell off the map anyways. So that was a fucking lie. So the next step, which was hinted by Maxis and Richtofen, was discovered by Sam Deman, who talks about building the nav card and noticing symbols. Sam posted a video outlining what we had all seen before. Then we have this very 2013 YouTube video that I had to do some fun remixing on, so I didn't get a yellow mark on the video that outlines these mahjong tiles on the map. Now in the video, um, this is happening. Four, it's, a, it's called a bamboo piece, and it's number four. A simple search will find that mahjong tiles are a part of games similar to card games in Asia, originating in China, but it's not explicitly clear from searches. The tiles on Die Rise represent directions and numbers. If we know anything about Easter eggs and zombies, then these will have much larger implications. So we have mahjong tiles now, 
symbols on elevators, symbols on the ground, and a nav card station built. So a whole day later, Sam Demand comes in with the first step completed. This is the next part of the Easter egg. For this, you need to find the four symbols on the elevators. Get the four, get your four teammates ready to go on them at the same time. You have to time it correctly to make it so everyone can get on it at the same time. And once you do, the symbol should glow and there should be a message. And then that's it, guys. That's it for this part of the Easter egg. Subscribe for the next part. Peace. Now, this was fairly obvious by today's standards, but back then, well, I don't know why this took a whole day to finish, but Easter eggs were still in infancy. Sam discovered that by having everyone time their jumps on the elevators to land on the ones with the symbol at the same time, it would light up, and the step was done, as they all stayed lit up. Now, just like the players of then, you may wonder what's next, and just like in transit, would there be a bunch of branching paths? Was I doing a Maxis or a Richthofen step? Die Rise worked a bit different. Not only was the Easter egg better spread through the whole map, giving reasons to be in most of the rooms, but the Easter egg was the same until one of the steps where it would then branch out. Those symbols outside of the elevators were the key to the next step. But instead of standing on them all at once, Sam Deman discovered that there was a coordinated order to them. The order changes per game, but the locations again split up the team to discover the map. The first one was right next to the radio tower over by Semtex's. The next was in the spawn by the M14 wall by. The next being in the ramen shop over near a Mahjong tile location, leading into letting players discover even more clues. This was also a slide down away from the brand new AN94 wall by, one of the best rifles in all of Zombies, with a mystery box that was flipped upside down in the room in case you were wondering if this map focused on verticality. You might want to be careful taking that slide down too, as having too many frames or bumping into a teammate would just kill you, as you would miss the jump. Oh, die rise, my beloved. Once Sam's team got the correct order of symbols by chatting it up, Richtofen and Maxis would come talk again. This was where the community was stumped for a bit, until Spiderbite from NGT Zombies found a Maxis audio hint that a sniper was needed for this next step. In this, Spiderbite correctly theorizes that a sniper was needed, and going off of the last audio from the previous step, I think he's correct. Actually, I know he's correct. We're in the future. future. Then, both Nick That Gaming Show and NGT Zombies both post at almost the exact same time that they have solved the next step. But NGT, from what I was able to tell, had basically already solved this the day before. And their reaction to solving this told me that they had no knowledge of others doing it. So have a listen. Look to the dragon. The energy One more must be found. Yes! Yes! What did I tell ya? Oh my god, I can't believe it. I was right. I was, we were right. I mean, I'm not taking all the credit here. I mean, it's a community thing, but damn, when I posted those videos earlier and the or, the orbs going to the, dra the lion's paws, oh yeah. This is where the Easter egg splits. No longer is this a Maxis and a Richtofen step, but a Maxis or Richtofen step starting with those lion statues that will look very familiar to World at War veterans, as these same statues were in our video on World at War Secrets and the Raygun Easter Egg. Why they are here is purely fan service, just like them being shown on golden symbols for a future step. But a choice lied in your hands for this next one. Would you take the lion statue orbs and join Team Maxis, or would you create the wonder weapon of the map? For Richtof and Step, you needed the Slickwifier, a controversial weapon to say the least. This weapon was built from parts found around the power area. Once assembling those parts from power, the connecting gross kitchen, the laundry, and the bathroom areas, and more, you built a weapon that essentially shot soap on the ground. This was very powerful when it first launched, so powerful that Treyarch was even afraid to let you pack a punch it, knowing that it would add too much power and break the game. That or launch your teammates back to the moon. When I grow up, I want to go to the moon! Why wait? <laughs> the saving grace that the Slickwifier was for a lot of teams wouldn't be able to stay in Treyarch's vision of the challenging map, so they ended up nerfing it to be less effective at straight up killing zombies. Then they snuck in a small easter egg that by shooting this sign outside of the map with a full MAGA Slickwifier ammo, it would upgrade the damage closer to its original form. 
that wasn't the only controversial part of this gun. There was more trolling your friends than anything productive here, like putting the liquefier on the ground before the jumps to the mattresses or the slide. The elevator shaft too. It was necessary for the easter egg however to have this weapon. As for Richtofen, you needed to lube up those balls. <laughs> yeah, boy. Spiderbite said in his video on the step that Richtofen instructs you to grab the liquefier when you pick up a ball letting you know that you're doing his side wrong by picking it up. The split in Easter eggs do have different steps, but just like Transit, they're in and around similar concepts. Like for Richtofen and Maxis, both of them had you going back to those golden circles around the map, just at different times. We will stay on Richtofen's path for now. And visually, I'm doing this so you know who we're following in the Easter egg. For this next one, Nick That Gaming Show discovered the next few steps first. With very tight precision, you had to use those beautiful trample steams on the zombie symbols and point them at the radio tower. This immediately meant that doing this Easter egg solo was not really an option as you could only get one trample steam per person, and each person needed to use one on a spot. Those spots were near the M14, near the Glamours and Spawn, near the Semtex, and just outside of the ramp to the roof. If you placed them in the correct position, they could not be picked back up. Just don't make the mistake I did when recording this footage for the video and place them all down at the same time, as it bugs the game out completely. Each time you place one in the correct spot, Richtofen lets you know you're doing great at being a little pawn in his game. Ha <laughs> ha I'm so excited! I'm so pleased. Keep going. Once all four were down, the players back then just needed to fling zombies or themselves, and this step was done. Maxis, on the other hand, was a different story. The zombies community found that if you picked up the balls instead, that Maxis gave a vague hint on where to move next. Is key. NGT Zombies Spiderbite found that you just needed to kill zombies in the Buddha room. Why here? I guess Buddha is about peace and zombies are about chaos, so we're cleansing the room? I have no idea. But this room is significant for other reasons too, as this would not only be used for the next step, but for the Easter egg song by activating a teddy bear here, and being the main place to trample steam those karate crawlers away. If you never got hit by them, they would even drop a free random perk. This room was the easiest for it, and a great high round area, since you could ideally train zombies here if the roof was too much trouble. One of the few areas great for high rounds in a map that was otherwise incredibly claustrophobic and difficult to train on. This next step for Maxis was extremely confusing, and if you didn't have the voice lines for Maxis on this one giving you a hint, then I think Die Rise might have taken months to complete. Even with the great amount of visual clues, this easter egg step was needlessly implemented here. This was the only hint! The regenerative power of that device is vital to our success. We need the ballistic knives. We need to revive somebody. So that goes along with the, the reincarnation quote so we're just not sure again exactly what step to use this on but we know that it is required and will definitely get us progress to maxis we're going to continue on so if you happen to want to pack a punch ballistic knives and if you heard maxis talking over all of the zombies screaming you would have heard that maxis wanted you to use the ballistic knives in some way all you had to do for this easter egg step was get pack a punch ballistic knives and shoot them in the Buddha room. This was found purely by trial and error, and more than likely an accident. For more gluttony of punishment, this step only worked if the player was holding the Krauss Refibrillator, the pack knives, and it didn't work if you bought the Galvanuckles or the Bowie knife, and it didn't work if you already bled out before. So that's nice. Maxis would then have you doing a step similar to Richtofen's that we discussed, put trample steams down, but in the lion statue spots and not the zombie spots. There were two that were closer to spawn and two near the radio tower, very close by to Richtofen's symbols. 
I haven't mentioned this yet, but each time you completed a step for Richtofen or Maxis, the dragons would each spark in different colors to signify your progress. One of the dragons had blue fireworks and the other had orange fireworks. Another nice touch Treyarch left in for new and returning players to feel this map out and see progress in real time. On February 1st of 2013, DJ Tekken X published a video outlining the steps and more to the Easter egg. For Maxis, once the trample steams were set and you placed the balls on them, DJ discovered that this would happen. I try to be patient, but you ruined everything! Who's working? We are Do I need to speak slower so you can follow simple instructions? You must keep going. The fire of his energy! You have taken an important step. The fire has been activated. We must locate and activate the others if we are to prevent Richtofen's plans from reaching fruition. This easter egg already has way more substance in its puzzles and way more visual progress and reward than Transit ever did. Now, the final step was a puzzle in and of itself, as DJ Tekken would speak on. You will have to obtain the Galvan Knuckles in the shaft on your way to the Buddha room. Then you will go near the spire and you will have to correctly punch each corner of the spire. Now, how do you know which corner to punch? It's all in the Mahjong tiles. I cannot tell you how to do it perfectly because it will be different for everybody, every game. So yes, Mahjong tiles were needed here, and they had a ton of spots all over the map that I could go into fine detail about, but the main message is really the same. You had directions, north, south, east, west, then numbers, one through four. The color would determine a lot, however, and every game was different, so Tekken had different ones from what everyone else had. The directional tiles and the color of them indicated the order in which that particular post should be punched. Each compass point and bamboo tile was colored, and the same colored ones are correlated. The colors are red, blue, green, and black. So for example, if the player found a green north tile, and green with three bamboos, the north side of the tower was hit third in the order. This step led players all over the map, and utilized each of the rooms like the kitchen, the bathrooms, the laundry rooms, the broken buildings. It was one awesome scavenger hunt if you ask me, and required team coordination and notepads or notebooks like in the old days. Players also noticed that the tower was either glowing orange or blue because both mad scientists were up to the same point. Richtofen had less steps in this one. And yes, both easter eggs did end the same, which is pretty lame, but I digress. If you shot, meleeed, grenade, etc, nothing would happen. But if you banked enough points in the banking system, you could buy Galvanuckles for 6,000 points. The banking system was one of the more controversial decisions for Black Ops 2, because it really just trivialized the mode. The idea was that for high rounds, a teammate may lose out on points and need them for getting back in, as zombies was really tough if you died late. So sharing points was helpful, but most of the time it just meant someone in your team had thousands of points by round one. It did make steps for easter eggs more bearable, like hitting the box for those ballistic knives and getting the galva knuckles from a wall buy. Once DJ Tekken X and his team of Big Black John, Silver is Pro, and Mr. Siegeling put it all together, they completed the easter egg once and for all, claiming world's first on February 1st of 2013. <sighs> I want to give a few thanks to a couple people that really helped us through it. Spiderbite with his videos on the Mahjong tiles were very, very helpful. Also want to pay tribute to Liam Winter that gave us the idea for the traps on the lion tiles. And of course, I can never forget my team, Big Black John, Silver is Pro, and Mr. Seagull. It's always good when winners shout out the people that helped along the way. It shows that it was all a team effort. On the Richtofen side, Prestige is Key posted a video of the world's first with his team of Nick That Gaming Show, Telixian, and Liam Winter, 
who claimed world's first a day before on January 31st of 2013. Yes. Oh yeah, yes! Yes! Oh. Woo! Yes! <laughs> all in all, this easter egg, while room splitting in its decisions and what you were able to do, was a great evolution of easter eggs in Black Ops 2, and it showed that Victus did have more substance than what Transit was presenting in its easter eggs. With that being said, and Die Rise's perception to a lot of the community, there has been a push for a modern day remaster. With all the time that had passed and the love or hate relationship that Die Rise was to the fanbase, the Zombies community took it into their own hands and made a Die Rise remastered on Black Ops 3. Now it's not done and exists on Destiny Dobby's Patreon, wait Destiny? But it does offer a much more modernized take on Die Rise, like multiple parts being able to be picked up and spacing that fits Black Ops 3 more so than 2. It's still not the most beginner friendly map, but the creator thankfully does have a quest for PhD Flopper, and my god does it make a difference here. And there's even a nice easter egg to get to the floor that it's on. Die Rise remains a study on a map that is perfectly illustrated by its easter egg. It's not easy, but for those who seek a challenge out and find something to appreciate in that challenge, there is gold buried beneath the surface. The next map in the series would go to a getaway island, first shot at a zombies map, in Mob of the Dead. I will see you there.